Hi, my name is Michelle Hidalgo. Now I'm going to talk about hypoparathyroidism complications. First, the definition. This is a rare condition that occurs when the parathyroid glands in the neck do not produce enough parathyroid hormone. There are four parathyroid glands located near or behind the thyroid glands. The main function of parathyroid hormone is to regulate the level of calcium in your body. It also controls level of phosphorus and has a role in the production of the active form of vitamin D. When we talk about the symptoms, um, there's tingling and burning sensation of the tips of the fingers, toes, and lips, muscle aches, muscle spasms, fatigue or weakness, painful menstruation, hair loss, dry and flaky skin, depression, and anxiety. Can decrease a patient's life expectancy by five or six years, even when the calcium is only slight. <laughs> Hyperparathyroidism is a disease of the parathyroid glands, affecting 1 in 800 people during their lifetime, and 1 in 250 women over age 50. Since in less than 20 minutes, since as many as 30% of patients with hyperparathyroidism will have more than one parathyroid tumor, your surgeon will examine all four parathyroid glands to be sure a second tumor has not been left behind. Once all parathyroid tumors have been removed, the disease is cured. The process of eating away at the bones stops within minutes. Bone pain is typically gone within a few hours. The bones begin to regenerate within days, and the osteoporosis begins to improve. <laughs> Now, this is a video that explains the hypoparathyroidism mechanism. We'd like to tell you about the rare condition hypoparathyroidism. Hypoparathyroidism arises when the parathyroid glands are unable to perform. There are more When the level of calcium in the blood is too low, the parathyroid will have to secrete some more. The accumulated increase of calcium will move up to the blood of the blood. The PDH also regulates calcium levels in the blood. But it will soon be not the substance of the liver of the blood of the blood. Calcium and phosphorus have several important jobs, including building strong bones and teeth and regulating muscle contraction, such as the heartbeat. Now, the application in medicine. First, we have to talk about the causes. Post surgical hypoparathyroidism is the most frequent cause. It appears as a result of accidental damage during surgery, autoimmune disease, hereditary hypoparathyroidism, comprehensive treatment to treat cancer by radiation to the face or neck, which can lead to the destruction of the parathyroid glands. Um, maybe this uh, was used as a treatment for hyperthyroidism in some occasions. Low level of magnesium in the blood, which can affect the function of parathyroid glands.
Most patients will develop hypoparathyroidism as a result of surgery, either parathyroid surgery or thyroid surgery, and sometimes uh, tracheal surgery or neck surgery for cancer. But other patients will have hypoparathyroidism because of genetic problems that either prevent normal development of the parathyroid glands or impair normal function of the parathyroid glands, regardless of whether it's a surgical complication or the result of an underlying genetic abnormality, the hallmark is inadequate amounts of parathyroid hormone that result in hypocalcemia and hyperphosphatemia. Hypoparathyroidism is a disorder in which patients have too little parathyroid hormone for what they need, and how they get it depends on uh, underlying diseases or surgery. In most cases, in the adult population, what we see is hypoparathyroidism developing after neck surgery, commonly after thyroid surgery, but sometimes after cancer surgery on the head or neck. Hypoparathyroidism is a disorder that can happen after thyroid and parathyroid neck surgery, where your body's ability to respond to low calcium levels is impaired, and it can cause symptoms ranging from numbness to muscle cramping. Um, it can be mild or it can be debilitating. And uh, the most common source of the disease is having it as a complication of neck surgery. In our experience, about three quarters of our patients develop hypoparathyroidism because of neck surgery. So the neck surgery was done for reasons that were indicated, typically because of cancer or other disease. But um, about a quarter of the patients develop this condition not through surgery, but through other diseases. So this is a consequence in some cases of other diseases. There's also a small subset of patients who develop this because of gene mutations they're born with. So those are people who get diagnosed usually shortly after birth because they have low calcium, they have seizures, they have other consequences. But in the adult population, about a quarter of our patients show up not having had neck surgery, and yet they have the condition based on the blood tests. So, the hypoparathyroidism can lead to various complications, which is the main topic here. First, tetany. These cramp-like spasms in the hands and fingers can be prolonged and can be painful. Tetany can also cause muscle discomfort and contraction or, or spasms in muscle of the face, throat, or arms. Paresthesia. They are characterized by rare tingling sensation of the lips, tongue, fingers, and toes. Malformation of teeth as we can see in this picture. Impaired kidney fun function, arrhythmias and fainting, and calcium deposits in the brain can cause balance problems and seizures. This is a video understanding the long-term impact of chronic hypoparathyroidism on the kidneys. Hypoparathyroidism is a rare endocrine disease that occurs when low or inadequate levels of parathyroid hormone, or PTH, are secreted by the parathyroid glands in the neck. The most common cause is injury to the parathyroid glands during neck or thyroid surgery. The condition is considered chronic when low levels of calcium and PTH persist for at least six months after surgery. Symptoms can include fatigue, muscle cramps, tingling and twitching of muscles, brain fog, anxiety, and reduced quality of life. More serious complications, such as cataracts, ischemic heart disease, and impaired renal function can occur in chronic hypoparathyroidism. Standard therapy includes calcium and vitamin D supplementation. However, some people remain symptomatic despite treatment and may require higher doses. There are concerns about the prolonged use of higher doses, particularly with regard to hypercalciuria or increased urinary calcium, kidney stones, nephrocalcinosis, and declining renal function. ESE guidelines now suggest considering monitoring of urinary calcium excretion at regular time intervals over a 24-hour period. PTH is critical in maintaining mineral homeostasis in the body through its effects on bone, kidney, and the intestine. As part of this process, the kidney plays a central role in regulating renal calcium absorption and phosphate excretion and activating vitamin D. Abnormal serum calcium concentration, hypercalciuria, 
and increased phosphate and calcium phosphate concentration increase the potential for serious comorbidities. It's not fully known what causes the long-term effects of hypoparathyroidism on the kidneys, and whether this is due to severe or long-term disease progression, standard treatment, or both. Now we have to talk about the pros and cons. An accurate diagnosis and treatment might prevent these complications associated to hypoparathyroidism. And cons, once it occurs, calcium and vitamin D won't improve them, which means maybe it's gonna get better the symptoms, but the, the disease is not cured, it's not gonna disappear. And now this is a video about NADPARA. So the beauty about NADPARA... NADPARA is our parathyroid hormone 1284, it's the full length the native parathyroid hormone that our scientists were able to replicate. So the beauty about NADPARA it is the fact that it is a hormone replacement for patients who lack the parathyroid hormone. So think of insulin or progesterone or other hormone replacement therapies. And it is exactly the same formula, the same peptide as the native uh, parathyroid hormone. We developed uh, NADPARA originally in osteoporosis and repurposed it in hypoparathyroidism, which is a rare condition, about 50,000 patients in the U.S. And these patients suffer, as the name indicates it, from the lack of the parathyroid hormone. And uh, NADPARA plays the replacement role. Now, applied in Ecuador. Ecuador is not an endemic area for this disease, but an early diagnosis would help us prevent complications in people who suffer it. There are no official statistical data on this pathology, however, based in several local studies, the prevalence in Ecuador is low compared to other countries, and it often seen in older people and pregnant women. In conclusion, hypoparathyroidism is a care entity, and the most commonly occurs as a complication of anterior neck surgery. Is, if not treated in time, can turn into a serious health problem. An early diagnosis will be initial goal in these patients. And hypoparathyroidism doesn't have a high prevalence in Ecuador, but the most affected population is the elderly and pregnant women. Thank you.